Hey ladies, it's Amanda. Welcome to the Feel Amazing Naked podcast. This is a show where we dig deep, get honest, and talk about all the unsexy steps it takes to meet your goals. Whether you want to get fit, eat healthier, make more money, start a business, or any other results you desire in your life. Most of all, this podcast is for women who are ready to feel amazing naked on the outside and the inside. So ladies, time to take it off. Welcome to the Feel Amazing Naked podcast, ladies. I'm so excited you're here, and I want to give a little context to today's episode. I did a four-part series that I'm going to be sharing on the podcast over the next few weeks, all with regard to self-prioritization and breaking through some of the beliefs we have around putting our needs and our wants first, while we still do all the things that are required of us inside our life. So I want to give this context because they were done on Instagram and Facebook Lives. So you might hear me refer to the comments or the chat box or people asking questions live. That is why that's happening. We are just resharing the trainings because they were so powerful and we got so many great pieces of feedback from ladies of the stories I shared and some of the aha moments inside of them. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. And without further ado, here we go. I know that many of you want a feeling of flow and ease and peace that come through your week. And I want to talk today about the best way to make that happen and potentially the number one mistake you are making in your week that is preventing that feeling from actually being captured inside your week. And I love movies and I'm going to use a little bit of thought from the movie, The Devil Wears Prada. Have you guys seen that movie? If you haven't, then don't worry. I'm going to kind of recap a little bit about what that movie's about. But essentially, a quick recap of that movie is Meryl Streep plays Miranda in that movie. And she's this fashion magazine editor. And it's been a while for me, but there's a lot of scenes in that movie that definitely play out in my memory quite often. And I love Anne Hathaway in this movie. She stars as Andy. Andy is this college grad who goes to New York City and lands a job as Miranda's assistant. And she takes a job, not because she's excited about that job necessarily, but Miranda is known to give all of these great reviews or great feedback to promote these assistants into like future jobs that are their dream jobs. Andy kind of says yes, because she's like, oh, I hope this fast tracks my career. The thing about this movie, though, that happens as you watch it play out is she is constantly just treated like crap by Miranda. She is bossed around. She's really demeaned the entire time. And she starts to spend her entire life catering to Miranda's needs. She's just like, whatever she needs, she doesn't ever set up boundaries. She doesn't ever say anything back. Andy, played by Anne Hathaway, she's so caught up on these like future career ambitions and the go, go, go and the accolades that that pretty much takes a precedence over everything else in her life. And she really starts to lose perspective. And then things happen, and you can see she's exhausted, she's burnt out, she's not happy, and you can see that the two of them, Miranda and Andy, are on very different pages as far as what matters to them in their life. Fast forward, I don't want to ruin the end if you haven't seen it, because it's definitely a great movie to watch. But at the end of the movie, there's basically a culminating event that happens for Anne Hathaway, and she either has to select a friend somebody that had basically a tragic event happening in her life versus this career that she's ambitiously chasing over and over and over, hoping to like get to the next level. And at the end, ultimately, there's this like really powerful, it's almost like this woman empowerment experience where she basically takes the phone and she says, screw you to Miranda and marches off towards what I would call freedom, like freedom. A lot of learnings have taken place in this movie about herself. Why am I talking about this? What does the devil wears Prada have to do with you and your life? Well, the truth is, I think a lot of us fall into a similar trap when it comes to our lives. And so I want to talk a little bit today about why these learnings inside the devil wears Prada actually relate to your own life. And not all of them may land on you, but as I talk, I think you're going to see that these are some common mistakes that you're making inside of every week of your life that are preventing you from feeling the way you want to feel. And number one, 
I think the biggest, I'm gonna start with the biggest, I think, or most impactful for me anyways, is that you aren't walking the walk in your life and talking the talk on a weekly basis. So let me explain what I, what I mean about this. I'm gonna tell you a story about my high school days. So I had a phone in my room in high school and I had, do you remember those like actual handheld ones? And mine was clear so you could see like all the wires. Please tell me you guys had a phone like that or something, or you had a pager like that. I used to think those were so cool. So I saved up my money to buy this clear phone where you could see all the wires. And my curfew to be off the phone on a school night during high school is nine o'clock. My parents kept my boundaries pretty tight. And so at nine o'clock, I was to be off the phone, still able to stay up or whatever the case was. Well, one night, I actually got on the phone many nights after this. So mom and dad, if you're watching, I'm sorry, but you probably know that by now. Because one night it was after curfew and I waited and I waited for a while. And then I got back on the phone to talk to my now husband and it was like 10 o'clock. And I was talking, talking, talking. And all of a sudden I heard a noise. And then on the other end, it was like my mom, she said, Amanda, are you on the phone? <laughs> I was like, well, what am I going to say? Like, she picked up her landline downstairs while I was on mine upstairs. And she totally knows I'm on the phone because there's no dial tone. There's nothing. So I just had to confess. I was just like, yeah, I'm on the phone. I'm talking to him. And she's like, get off the phone now. And she came upstairs and she removed my phone from my room, pulled it right out of the wall in a very easy way. And off we went. We had discussions about it further. But the point I share that story around, and you can say with an emoji or hands up, have you had that experience in life to some capacity? Maybe not that one. But the point being is where I knew on the inside I was making a decision that was not in integrity and congruency with who I was and who I wanted to be. I made a commitment that I wasn't going to be on the phone. And then I went ahead and broke that promise to myself, broke that promise to my parents and inside it did not feel good. And this is what happens in our weeks often is we're not walking the walk inside. You have clear priorities. You've made clear promises to yourself. Like maybe you're going to go work out five times in the week, or maybe you're going to end your work day sharply at four so you can go home and be present with your family. I don't know what those priorities are for you, but one of the biggest struggles that you may not even know are occurring in your life because you haven't identified it as this emotional junk that hangs out with you is that you are not walking the walk because what you say on the inside about your priorities is not what you're actually living out on the outside. And this is what was happening inside the movie. She had family and friends and all these people that were a priority to her. And then she takes this job and all of a sudden there's this gap that grows and pulls and grows and pulls. And all of a sudden she's like, how did I get here? I know what I want to be my priority and I'm really struggling to make that happen every single week. Number two thing that we struggle with in our weeks and we may not even know is that you have no time for yourself because you're busy delivering for everyone else. And this is what was happening to Anne Hathaway inside the movie. She was busy catering to Miranda's every single need, any hour, any minute. She was just, I like to call it the QT effect. You know, QT, the like convenience store. It's like always open. It's this revolving door. I've never been in there one time that there wasn't a bajillion people. Even we're like driving cross country and it's the middle of the night. Right? This is how Anne Hathaway was operating her life. She became QT for Miranda. She was like, whatever you need, whatever hours. And I think some of you operate like this too. It's you are open all the time. It's like your kid needs you. Yes, you drop everything. You go serve them. Your employer needs you. Go your husband, your friend, your spouse. And so you spend your entire life catering to everybody else. And you're like, why do I feel exhausted and burnt out and resentful in my life? And that's because you've set a precedence and you've taught the people in your life how to treat you. And what's missing is boundaries, right? And that's what was happening inside the movie is there was no boundaries. Miranda had full access to Anne Hathaway's character, Andy, and her life was literally starting to like crumble underneath her. And she kept, without saying it, was like, how in the heck do I get here? And what am I going to do to get out of this place? And I know some of you are feeling that way. Like, I do not like the way this feels. There is no end in sight. I have these kids that I'm supposed to be taking care of. I have this career that I'm supposed to be tending to. And it all just feels like overwhelming. Another thing that was happening inside the movie, which I think that many women struggle with in general, that is plaguing their week is this constant striving for perfection. You're constantly striving to have the perfect week, the perfect da, 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 like check, 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 check all the boxes of perfection. 
Like if it doesn't look perfect, like if the workout doesn't look perfectly that hour I envisioned, then I cannot participate. If the meal I had planned, I have to like sub it out somehow and it doesn't look like the perfect plan I made, there's no way I could switch those meals around or do something else here and there. And when that happens, we are plagued by basically analysis paralysis. We struggle to feel content right where we are because all we have is this expectation that perfection exists inside our life and that that's attainable. And this is what was happening inside the movie too. And so if that is the constant learning that perfection is the only way, it's an impossible metric to actually measure up to. And lastly, one of the things that really happened inside this movie was that Anne Hathaway's character, Andy, was constantly striving for success. She was like, if I just get to this next thing, I'll be happier then. And I think this happens inside of our weeks often. If I just get to Friday, I'll be happy. If I just get the promotion, I'll be happy. If I just make more money, if I just lose 10 pounds, if my husband just does this, if my kids just do this. And so we're constantly in this quest to seek happiness outside ourselves. When ultimately, ladies, we are the only ones that get to make ourselves happy on a weekly basis. And I think this is a big mistake that women make inside their week is they look to external sources to say, oh, if this happens, then I will be happy. And that is not the case. And inside the movie, ultimately what she thinks is if I just take this job with Miranda, it will get me to this dream career opportunity that I imagine, and then I'll be happy. So she starts to just like muddle through it. She's like, this is just a stepping stone. Like I'm just going to get through this and then I'll get to the next thing. And I think many of you might be experiencing this in your life. I just got to hit the 20 year mark and then I can retire. So I'm going to settle for feeling like crap inside my job every day. Or when my kids just hit 12, then they'll be more sufficient. Or when they drive at 16, then I'll be happier. Right. So we muddle through the in between and it feels like crap. We feel like crap in our lives and we're just waiting for this gold star moment to come in the future. And oftentimes it never comes because guess what? We get there and we're like, oh, shoot, it wasn't as electric as I thought it was going to be. And so all of these themes play out inside this movie, which often play out inside of the lives of the women I talk with and I get to coach and too, I, I once experienced as well. And so this story may sound familiar to you. The feeling of being kind of trapped in a prison of your own making every day is a bit like groundhog day and you should be happy in this place. And you have these things that should feel good. And yet you still don't have that peace, that power, that confidence, that flow and ease that you most desire. And so you go through the motions delivering for everyone else. Maybe that people pleaser is really, really hard not to give into in your life. And it feels like resentment. It feels like no freedom. It feels like overwhelm chronically. And so this is why I teach women how to create a sense of power and ownership inside of their week. And when you do that in your week, guess what? It leads into each month. It leads into each year. And without changing your external circumstances, you can feel entirely different inside of your life. And that is power. And so if I think of the end of the movie, when Anne Hathaway tosses her phone in her in the pond, I think it was, or like in a fountain or something, it's like that. That's what you deserve to feel every day. A sense of power, a sense of confidence, a sense of clarity on your priorities in like you are walking the walk. What you say is mat- matters to you is actually what you do. Every day should feel like there's space for you. Every day should feel like happiness is accessible and you don't have to change something to attain it. I hope today's episode spoke right to your heart and it's really about making yourself a priority without exception. No matter if you have a busy schedule, you have a busy life, you run a business, you work corporate, you stay at home with your kids. No matter what stories are wagering in your mind, the greatest way to feeling more energy and increasing your productivity and feeling just freaking awesome in your life is making space for yourself. And I want you to continue to do that inside of a free training that I am just kicking off. You can visit feelamazingnaked.com forward slash more energy. And inside this free training, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to teach you how to have more energy, how to reduce the overwhelm that's taking place with all the things on your lists and still be able to do all the things you desire with yourself at the top of your priority list. 
So again, come join my free masterclass at feelamazingnaked.com forward slash more energy.